<laughs> and I always try to put my bias to the side, seriously. Everybody's like, oh, he loves Team Liquid. He likes, you know, the NA scene, which I do. Um, but objectively speaking, I think Team Liquid's going to move forward here. Um, I, but I don't think it'll be easy. I really think this is a team um, that's dangerous. I just feel like it's the first match of the day. It's, it's easy to go in there overconfident. I think Bus Driver and Lilith Lil can play very loose. Don't have, you know, the pressure's on the champs. But uh, overall, I, I think Team Liquid's going to carry the day here. I'll say 3-1. Uh, 3-1. Wow, that's, I mean, I think that's actually a fair assumption to be fair catch up. I would definitely actually agree. Um, I would assume either 3-0 or 3-1 to Liquid, uh, purely because you know, we've seen them do amazing on things on Corrupted Keep before. This being our first map could be somewhat of a trendsetter. We'll see what happens, but this is going to be our first match of the top eight. QuakeCon 2018. This is a big one to start things off. Let's go, yeah, make some noise, guys. I can hear you in the crowd. The hype is real right now for that 175k pot. Let's go, Captain. All right, well, already off the bat, Rafa and Dehang have picked up the first two frags of this round. You're going to see a big skirmish breaking out towards the LG side, and Dehang's already popped his dual wield, and unfortunately, he will fall for now, but that's going to come at a price as it's going to be Bus Driver trying to push in back towards Rockets. He's just being denied a lot of equipment here, which is so important when it comes to Corrupted Key. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, now we've kind of seen the clutch band out and the kill taken out. We're going to see a lot more of, like, I guess, a traditional comp. You know, Galena is such a wonderful champion in 2v2. Rapper Jesus. right now putting in a fair amount of work. But things dead even. A nice start to be if you are going to be, you know, less than Bus Driver. It's just been a, a bloodbath this entire round so far. I mean, we're 50 seconds <laughs> in, we have 10 frags. <laughs> less than a minute, man. Come on. What a way to start things off. But again, you're seeing like the focus of both teams and the area they want to control here. Good job by Bus Driver just bounce to hang to finish them off with the LG. They have the teleporter control with the totem. And I think Rafa to hang now, they're, they're more than happy to just sit back and kind of attack appropriately, get the weaponry they need. The dual wield has come in. Bus Driver is very low on HP. But again, you see the focus. You see the calls being made by List to go for, I think it was uh, Rafa there to focus him down, even though Dehang was right around the corner. But still very close. Seven to seven. I, I mean, to be fair, Liquid starts to really shine. And there's the first ring out of the day. Such a common thing in 2v2, man. I mean, if you get hit by a rocket launch in midair, in many ways, you have no control over it and losing yeah. kills. So I'm expecting to see a lot of even when we come into Awoken. Uh, but I think Rap and Hang, they start to really shine once those power-ups come up, because not only do they pull off these major numbers uh, with the eliminations picking those up, but they also get a lot of map control, which is so important. And especially with the meta and how it's kind of adapted with, with, the, with the major power-up items coming in, it's more about control than it get about getting that quad and getting that protection. The thing is, play to improve, they're so good at playing that up close and personal game. If you want to go point blank, they're more than happy to play at that pace, which is why I would always consider Corrupted Keep to be one of their stronger maps. That said, the quad damage has spawned, and right now it's Team Liquid holding that one. And I'd be worried, man. Rafa with quad damage, one of the most dangerous players in our scene anyway, and now he does more damage. Here we go. It should be a free kill if he catches him. Yeah, he backed yep. away towards Mega, just get the extra stack in. It's, it, technically, it's only like a one-for-one one trade off the back of the quad being picked up, so not even a net advantage for them so far, but he pushes in. There's nothing they can oh do! Oh, my God. Lightning struck twice. Deletion. 100% deletion right there, and he's going to get a little bit of the extra quad damage. Why not? Let's get one more rocket off. Bus Driver's going to fall down, and what was a very even match to begin with is very quickly starting to escape them. A couple of good rockets, Bus Driver, and more importantly, losing the dual wield, so that accomplished nothing. 30 seconds later, we'll see it back. It was still like a questionable contention, uh, contention when they went in for it. I mean, Rafa had maybe five seconds total left, and Bus Driver came back in looking for the elimination, looking to, to pick up the quad. But he wouldn't have accomplished much off of it, so I'm not sure if that was actually a smart choice for him. But either way, 18-9. to nine. We were at 7-7 seven to seven apiece for the first minute and a half, but this quad is netted like, with such a big advantage. Yeah, Bus Driver was in a terrible position right there. Do you run straight forward into Dehang, or do you use the jump pad to get absolutely guaranteed killed by Rafa? You have to watch out about your positioning right now, you know. Rafa and Dehang, that they're so coordinated, they really know how to sort of pin you in, especially yeah. on a map like this, where there's nowhere to run if you get put in a corner. I'm glad that you brought that up, actually, Ketchup, because I think they're one of the few teams out there that actually do that so well. They, they focus on pulling off these pincer moves to attack at the same time from different angles to allow these kills to come I mean, through. Like right now, right? Here we exactly. go. Exactly. Rafa manages to get one of the kills. The Galena Totem, for those uninitiated, really good, guaranteed heal, does damage to enemies. Very useful when you put it on the end of a teleporter. Yeah, it denies LG. You have to clear it from a different angle, and you actually have to walk into them instead of going through the teleporter. Wrap on 8 HP. He's got to actually die now, which is fine, because protection's coming up. Bus Driver at 50 HP. He's going to be able to restock to 100, yes, but the armor is looking a little bit worse for wear. He's only got three rockets, too. That's oh, the no. thing. He hasn't got much ammo. A couple more, it's going to be gone. Does damage enough to got this run in there, but that 2v1. I actually wonder if he's on borrowed time. Yeah, it doesn't manage to get anything. Bus Driver drops 
way too early, which means that Lynx cannot survive the 2v1 attack. Even though you take reduced damage, doesn't mean much when you've got Rafa and Dahang focusing you. Yeah, it's, it's reduced. It's not no damage. You just take less of it. But when it's Rafa and Dahang are the ones of the enemies, they can make that quick work of them. But you can see also the way they attacked that, you had Rafa and Dahang, they did like die before the protection came up. But because of the damage they did, Play to Improve didn't have the HP to take the protection and then make something happen off the back of. There was no Mega, there was no Heavy to actually back into. So really smartly done by, by Liquid, and now they're still maintaining this lead. All right, this runs in, gets a little bit of a frag, but great to see how quickly it's escaped them. The hand going into his dual wield. Fast to fire rate, here comes the Rockets, man. I wonder if it's enough to win this 1v1. Bus Driver! Coming in through the teleporter, says hello. Now we talk about Rockets, but people forget about how much damage a Shotgun Blast it's can do to so the face. It's so good. It really is. And I've actually seen like, a lot of people actually go towards Super Shotgun and starting Shotgun quite a bit more because the damage you can do, especially on the respawn back in. But finally, some life coming into play to improve. I think the starting shotgun goes hand in hand with a lot more abilities as well. You know, if you yeah. go in a clutch shield with a rocket launcher or dual wield shotguns with BJ, in many ways, you don't even need anything else. Fresh off the spawn with a good stack, I mean, that's all you need. You can see now Lyths and Bus Driver trying to get some control back, going towards Heavy again. The problem is they didn't have an armor stack before securing that, so Lyths only need to get up to 100. Not going to be able to overstack at all. Dehang now pushed in from behind. Dual wheels available. Quad up in 30 seconds. Raph is going to fall. And Dehang is just going to come in looking to mow them down. He gets the first now. You see Bus Driver trying to run away. He actually runs back over towards a totem. And Dehang, is he going to get a third off of this? I think he's in a good form to do it. Heals up on the totem. But I think that shows confidence in a 2v1, knowing that if he has dual wield, Dehang's aim is ridiculous anyway. And he actually... <laughs> how do you run into a 2v1 and make them run away from you? Like, that is such a level of respect shown. Gets put in a corner. Bus Driver manages to finish it off. Doubles. Super Shotgun's going to see to that. And in three seconds, we're going to see quad damage. Yeah, Rafa's fan away rockets. Bus driver's actually very low. He gets bursted down. Dehang gets a double. Rafa gets the quad. Uh -oh. 30 to 20. And now you're going to look for him to go on a tear. The weaponry, it's going to be there. He has the LG. And he has blood in his eyes. List is going to fall. This is not looking good for, for play to improve. And to be fair, this is a map we didn't really expect them to excel well against Liquid. I'm actually kind of surprised Rafa didn't see him on the left there. We actually see a little bit of the model. But I wonder if he was just looking towards the right at the time. Either way, he's going to chase it down. Can he get the super shotgun? Oh my god. I mean, barely any of the pellets connected there. Look at that, look at that again! This falls because he runs into a totem. That was a quad damage totem, by the way. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. And Hank's going to clean up that final one. So 33 to 21, Liquid maintain this control. Again, the way they're attacking is really well done. The way they're playing around these power-ups, even giving away position, but doing the damage they need to make something happen off the back of that. Hank's going to win out on that trade. Because it's, 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 it's because Rafa runs in, you know, that, that looked like a 1v1 for so long, but the best thing to do in a 2v2 is to make sure it's never a 1v1 if you can help it. Whenever you watch Rafa or Dehang getting attacked, within like half a second, the, like right here, the other team member always runs in. They always have each other's backs. It's the level of coordination of you're always taking 2v1 damage, even if you can only see one person. And if anything, you get them low enough that you're going to get the refrag anyways. Raph is going to pick up armor, protection coming off 40 seconds of time. You can see how low, though, the enemy team is. That BJ is not going to have a chance to live. His Bushar is going to fall, but Liss will get the one-for-one -one trade. But the one-for-one -one isn't going to work in the end. You need to have these two-for-one exchanges happen, especially when they're already down by 15 frags. Exactly. I mean, when they have such a significant lead, you can no longer take trades. You're going to have to start popping off. You have to start getting those unreturned kills. Oh, no. Lynx runs out of rockets. That's mismanagement of ammo. And that's going to be punished with another kill. We draw so close to the protection. And with how things are going, this could be the final protection of the game. It could be. 100%. And it's only 12 seconds away before we have this one kick off. Mega's going to be up. Team is secured for Tehang. So he has a massive stack. Again, Rafa staying towards the side, not trying to look to get you know this extra item before the, the protection comes up. They want to stick together. They want to make this work. The person who's going to pick up is already low on HP, and he actually might be bursted down here. They will fall. List will suicide, but the protection going to be going the way of Tehang. The problem is, is that they're consistently running into the power up, knowing that Team Liquid. <laughs> I cannot get over how many times the crowd in cell as well. Every time BJ takes damage, the crowd just adds to the music of the show. I think feel like we need to have a competition who can do the best screen. I think we'll be looking for that throughout the course of the day. Yeah, Bus driver actually does manage to get the double super nail gun. Just You look at damage and then you look at BJ with any gun. It's like, I thought I knew what damage looked like. Well, I guess not. Yeah. You forget about it until you see two of the weapons and that's when things get really out of hand. Eight minutes and 40 seconds in and we're almost at the frag limit of 50. <laughs> they both said it at the same time. They both took damage simultaneously. I, I just don't want to talk over it because it's just it's too pleasant to the ears. We're just getting rudely interrupted, if anything. Oh, what a fantastic rocket. Connects behind. Has to go with a little bit of machine gun from range. Remember, there is no rail on this map. So you kind of the only way to get that guaranteed damage is heavy machine guns, starter SMG maybe. There really isn't many options. 
Here we go, De Haan going in with a 2v1. Missing a couple of shots there, yeah. Didn't really have the damage on deck. But this late in the game, those kind of like mistakes they make where they run into a 2v1 and just give up a kill, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem when they right. only have five left to go. Make that four as Rafa wins that 1v1 with the Super Shotgun. I mean, the, the lucky factor is for play to improve. Uh, I mean, we're obviously it's going to be very difficult to come back from this, but they have a Galena, they have a BJ, they have the ability to heal so much health that if they do get these exchanges and they do win them without losing a person, they can get fully healed back up. The problem is, as you mentioned, with only now three frags needed for Liquid, they're going to have to come out of their hiding hole eventually to, to, to stop the quad. Yeah, it's this late on in the game, you kind of have to start asking yourself some questions of what do we do next? You know, there's no way bus drive the They're not talking about what's going to be the next play when we obviously go into Awoken, which should be our second map. Map number one is going to go to Team Liquid in a very dominant fashion. And uh, to be honest, with everything we saw, it was close at the beginning, but that is where the closeness ended. Yeah, and and that's again, I think where Liquid kind of strive is when they hit the the power ups. We we talked about you know Maestro EU, Razy, um, and Sparty together. For some reason, the second power up is where they always seem to hit their stride and they stretch their legs. But we see a lot of teams who are able to take protection, take quad, and transition to map control, just be able to run away with games. But luckily, I mean, as you can see, Bus Driver and List, they, they don't really look really sad about that result. It actually looks still pretty cheery. They have, whenever they go into a matchup and they know they have a absolute, like, Goliath tier team, um, they don't seem to worry too much, you know. They kind of go into a matchup expecting it to be difficult. They know what they're in for. So I don't think a loss surprises them. And because, you know, because these two guys have had um, an inconsistent road in the past, you know, it's not like they're going to be in tournament and they're going to be down a map and it's freaking them out. Because they've been there before. Yeah. You know, they've been there, done that, wore the t-shirt. But this is definitely their biggest performance, I would say, so far. You know, yeah. Especially as a two. Again, just the caliber of competition. And we're only one map down. My concern is that Awoken being next, this really is like Liquid's playground. This is one of their absolute strongest maps. They're one of their strongest maps. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about that, but I just set you up perfectly. You mate. did, you did. I'll I put my trademark on that one. Yeah, copyright that one. Um, but I think though, you know, when we get the rail into play, I mean, Raph and Dehang are strong, are strong players, are strong aimers. Um, they're not the best aimers in the world, but they're, they're damn good at it, clearly because they've been winning tournaments. I wonder if this is where Bus Driver and List can start to really ramp up the pressure. Get the Railgun on your side, you know, try to play them from a distance. Because the LG, like, when Liquid gets in your face, it was very hard for them to deal with that. So if you play them from range, play them with the LG, play them with the HMG if you can, try to sit around towards the rail and heavy area and power-up area, maybe you're going to have a better chance against them. The main thing I'm thinking actually really is going to be the champions that we're going to be seeing. If we do see uh, the Strog come through from the hang, I really think there is, uh, currently in competitive Quake, there is only one top tier strong. I know, and I really feel like that's to hang because he spent so long like specializing this champion, playing it with Rafa in particular, and kind of ignoring the rest of the community that was saying, hey man, I don't think this champion's any good. Right. And that's exactly what Dahang did with Clutch back in DreamHack Winter, you know, when uh, back then Clutch was a really strong champion, but he wasn't rated very highly over some of the more popular picks. And that was the exact same tournament where we saw Clutch in Sacrifice, we saw Clutch in Duel, and he was the, really the, the hero of the day for Dahang moving on. And it became only possible through his own instincts of saying, I think this works, yeah. and I'm going to ignore what everyone else thinks. I think is I think you know Raph and Dehang are one of the few teams out there willing to experiment with it. You know, willing to experiment with a new champion and try to find compositions that work. You know, a lot of teams out there they just want results, they just want wins. But Raph and Dehang are more than happy to say, all right, well I know we're probably going to lose these next 30 scrims, but let's give it a try. Let's see what its pluses, its minuses are, and even if they feel like it's not a, a champion they want to run in their kit. They're going to know the weaknesses of it. Thing is, man, if you lose 30 scrims to win four championships, I think that's good odds. We're going into our second map, and it's going to be Awoken. And that's a lot of damage on Team Liquid, BJ, and Strog and Pika. And Strog and Pika, you know, the passive of picking up those health files off a successful kill, a lot of sustainability. There it was. Here comes Pika coming in. Guaranteed 100 damage if you land a direct. Dehang gets a fantastic rocket. And because of the passive, an overstacked that. Yeah, again, as, oh, you, as you mentioned, yeah. those, little, those little health files or as I call them, the little solvents he can pick up, are so important because it gives you the extra HP to work with. Just like BJ, if you fall below um, 25, 50, 75, or 100, you heal back up to that next milestone. It's so much extra health you get over time within the map that makes it more ready, or for you to be more ready to just have another skirmish breakout again. 
Yeah, Rep are forced to retreat from that fight, but super confident that Hang can basically just run in there and clean up. And that's a level of confidence I actually like seeing with the two, Rapper. You know the coordination was, I'm out of ammo, you take care of it. And Hang was able to more than deliver that one. Bus Driver takes out Hang, but very weak himself. Rapper gets a rail, and actually a very, very good spawn there for Hang being pretty much point blank. Should be able to clean up that kill now. Oh no, he's gone through. Never mind, he went straight forward. No, he's my heavy. I mean, we did have pretty much this exact same scoreline before the power-ups came into play. Duel coming out of Rafa. A good timing for it again, being very forward-thinking, realizing that Quad's going to come up, and he's going to need it again. We've seen Bush Driver use his own, so we're going to have both dual wields available for this next power-up. Oh, yeah, they're definitely saving it. Once you kind of reach this point, and speaking of ability, actually, we can see there we did see a Pika kill. For those that don't know, obviously, the ability to summon a drone that does good damage by itself, you know, projectiles and all that, but you can go into a kamikaze mode. A direct hit does 100 damage, and Ooh. it's a great sort of, like, you know, check around a corner for that free damage they can't challenge. That was a big kill, by the way, because it allows Rafa to pick up the Mega with Quad right around the corner. He has the LG, which is one of the most important weapons to have as a BJ. He actually gets, I think, off of his own body that he had, or got off of bus drivers. The Quad's about to spawn in, and they've already got the first frag. They're going to be able to pick up the second, most likely, oh, but no! no! Rafa misses the rail, but the hang's going to be there, and you know what? He's got a lot of help files to pick up, but can he get the last one? And oh, bus driver! A big kill because now Liz has the quad. That was so vital. They got that trade. I don't think they're going to worry that bus driver went down. Oh, the important oh, thing was making oh, oh, sure oh, to hang on to What a wonderful long-range rocket! One of the best shots of the day by far to kick things off. And look at Liz stack. To hang is going to drop because I mean you can't challenge Galena with that much health and armor. Come on now. We talked about this on the desk with Machiavelli. Emotions. It can be the best of you, it can be the worst of you. Right now, they have to be on a high here, stealing away that quad. Let's turn it to a two-frag lead for themselves. But can they transition that quad now into stronger control around the map? That should be a kill on Rafa, but can he survive? Dehang, I would guess not. He's actually gonna get the suicide there, denying that away from Dehang. The unfortunate thing there is that it took one extra rocket to actually kill Rafa. Here comes around the corner. Wonderful catch on the dual wield, knowing that if we're against Strog, there's probably gonna be a peek around the corner. I love the reactionary shot up there. But like I was saying, it took one extra rocket to kill Rafa, right? Which wastes that that one second you yeah. needed to try and kill the hang. That's why you see a lot of uh, a lot of players with rockets for again you're newer. Um actually stagnate their shots between the first and second. If they pop you in the air with the first shot, sometimes they take a second just to guarantee hit the next 100 on you to finish you off. Because otherwise, maybe they're going to waste a second, uh, uh, two seconds. And this is a game of time, a game of speed, how fast you can get around the map. Every half second matters. Living your life a quarter mile at a time, as I said yesterday with Machiavelli. It's so important. Here comes that long range peek up. Oh, two for one. That should be more than sufficient oh. to get the double kill. To hang should be able to finish the one off. Rocket jump just to get out of there. A wonderful shot. And now Liss gets a taste of his own medicine. One good rocket to another. That was so well done. He rocket jumped away to make sure to have the fight on his own terms. They're gonna have a two on one here. That should be them finishing them off. Protection up in 15 seconds. Heavy's actually available right now, and no one on the side of play to improve has actually been able to secure it. To hang takes oh away Mega. God. It might cost him his life, but it denies the big pickup for him. Bus driver will jump in. Raph is actually caught out position trying to go towards Heavy. Protection's up in three seconds here, catch up. We might see play to improve, get back to back major items. Yeah, it's not an amazing position for Rafa to be in. Hasn't got the stack, but in many ways almost had to try and fight for it. We can see the protection actually being on the side of uh, play to improve. Bus driver, though, is incredibly weak. They did get two frags, but they're going to take some time to try and restack. Obviously, BJ's passive is going to somewhat help that, especially when he's got protection. But that said, I do wonder how Liquid are going to work around it. You know, they've coordinated. He's done damage with that natural passive regeneration. And just like that, that's why Galena in 2v2 is so good. We went from basically 1 HP to 175 instantly. I also have to keep in mind is that... Uh-oh. Rafa to hang, even though they lost quad, they lost protection, they're able to keep timings on heavy, keep timings on mega, secure both of those items. And they don't seem too flustered. You know, when, when Rafa to hang in the last map on Corrupted Keep, they took power-ups. Well, they also got like a 10 frag lead. This things are wonderfully close right now. It's gonna be 22 to 21. We did see the attempt to go in with the Pika. Not much rockets left. Liz gonna punish that with the super shotgun. Very weak, but it, it's the constant exchange, right? You know, when one of them goes down, it's it's hard to restack. Yeah, because, especially on a small map, because you respawn, a starting shotgun by itself does loads of damage, you're probably going to be near some sort of significant weapon Ooh. that you can immediately pick up. I think that's his dual wield. He popped two of his shotguns. Now Raph is going to come through, mow down lifts. 25 to 23, so again, this just shows the power of Liquid. They lost both power-ups, but they're still in the lead in this game, and 
that's kind of a sign for a play to improve that they need to improve their gameplay here. They need to be able to take a bigger lead off this against Liquid. They can't just deter or depend on only getting those power-ups to keep it an even game. Exactly. I mean, the, the important thing here is that the two power-ups that have spawned have actually gone in the favor of play to improve. That was their problem on Corrupted Keep, where Liquid were pretty much just content letting them run in and take it. They would take so much damage to try and get it first that it was just a matter of cleaning up the second they actually picked it up. And then Liquid could collect it and then, you know, put in the work that made it such a dominant first map. It hasn't really gone that way on Awoken just yet. These are some big potential frags coming through. Rapid needs to get around in time to help out Dehang. Five seconds for Quad. Heavy's going to be secured. You can see Rapid is going to fall from behind, but Bus Driver has no health, and Dehang's going to clean him up. Rocket jump back up. Liz is going to steal away Quad again. He gets to hang down, but what can he accomplish off this? He's going to need more than just that one. He's looking for Rapid, who's just dancing. He's diving behind the pillars, but he's going to fall in the end to Liz. Almost made me worry about that point right there, running in and missing a couple of shotgun blasts. That was actually, though, because of wonderful positioning from Rafa using the uh, pillars there to block the shots. This has got quad, and it really is these power-ups that has kept them in the fight. Oh. That was a fantastic rocket, by the way. Oh, my days. It just stopped him in his track. He has 39 health left. He can't even afford to get aggressive against them anymore, and they still have yet to be able to take the lead back for themselves off of the initial start they did have. It's, it's actually, actually crazy how one well-placed rocket, even if it doesn't secure a frag, does so much, you know, it has so much impact. Yeah. I mean, that's what you see also with Keel quite a bit, too. Why one of the reasons he's so strong, if you try to run at Keel, his pineapples that he shoots at you, his grenades, give you so much knockback that you can't really chase that. Yeah, you don't even take that much damage, but you just can't close that distance. Exactly. Been worrying to see Kiel on Awoken, one of his best maps. Bus driver, actually a good read. Could have potentially been a kill if it had just committed, but I don't what? think he was ready for them to run out. But what? Just casually 2v1ing as you do, and he's going to be rewarded with the mega health. This has been a wonderful game for play to improve. They're only barely behind at this point. And Dorland coming in, it's going to net him one, one elimination again to hang. Like just that rail, just so we talk about rockets, it just holds bus driver back. Oh, and eventually. No! That's a little unfortunate. Yeah, that sucks. And it's actually a really good hey, decision. Well, to hang suicide too. Yeah, no. well, I think to hang might have got ring outed. I think I'm pretty sure. <laughs> this is Awoken. This is the the, the map for it. Yeah, there's the patience, Rafa. You know, you said right, split second, just stagger your shots in the yeah. rocket to guarantee. That's exactly what Rafa just did. And now they're five kills ahead. If they go to hang on the respawn there, and Rafa wasn't able to get there in time. Protection's up in 15 seconds. Heavy's up right before it. Mega's. The thing is, if you get protection cleanly and you get Mega, you're going to be unstoppable. So this is going to be a potentially big power play for both these teams. And it's going to be to hang to steal away Heavy, but at what cost? He's going to fall. Duels come out of bus driver. Rafa can't get around the corner here, and it looks like they're going to be able to secure this protection. Actually, the uh, tribal being the weapon that it is, did something, but 50 HP, 75 now. You normally wouldn't think that's going to be very much, but the second you chuck protection into the mix, that is more than enough to take so many 2v1s and come off laughing. Oh, look how close it is, man. Yeah, and, and Rafa and Dehang, they're doing such a good job here on Awoken, which is like a donut map. It's really easy to run around in circles. They're actually keeping their distance, and he's, he's gotten like one, one kill of protection, we could say. That's it. Yeah, that, that's really not much to write home about. It's likely we're going to see Rafa go down, but... To hang gets the rocket right as the protection runs out. So he's going to be uh, pretty happy with that one, consistently staying two kills ahead. I mean, this could very easily be turned around. That's the thing. This is going to be a close game until the very end if it continues like this. Wonderful 2v nothing, to be fair. 2v nothing. Now we're even. Yeah, tying things up. They need to keep this pace up. He's got the shotgun out. And again, they're running around as a pack like wolves. Picking off these kills one by one. Now Raph is going to have a turn here. He's going to fall. And hopefully for them, they can restack back up. They're up to 41 to 39, not 41 to 40. We have still six minutes of time left here, but there's no way in hell catch up. We're going to reach that point of a time limit. Yeah, in the last minute, we've kind of just seen that kind of like buddy system come through. Now the peak is there. They didn't really manage to accomplish much, but that's going to be, again, just two for nothing for Liquid. They come off better in this exchange. Oh, wonderful spawn reacting with the dual wield. Rafa barely survives. Liz should be able to clean that one up. And it's going to be one kill separating these two teams. This very very well could be a nail biter. We need to see the pace slow down for both these teams. Realizing quads in 30 seconds. That's going to be the big power play. That's going to net one of these teams this map victory. 24 seconds left to go. Mega's about to spawn in. Heavy won't be there in time. Well, it technically could, but it's going to be a really risky play to go for it. Dehang's trying to push out, trying to keep the pressure on, trying to do a lot of damage before they transition into this pickup. It's another shot. 
even stalling for his second. He's going to miss out on this one, unfortunately. And it's going to allow him to escape, but uh -oh. here comes the peeker. Oh, he's going behind. He is so dead! There we go! Lift drops! And again, the group fight goes in the favor of Team Liquid. They're going to be rewarded with the quad damage, and Pika has probably just won this game, Captain. And there's, I, he's not even burstable anymore. He still has so much stack to work with here. They need four eliminations. I think even Rafa's going to scout them out to give the information to the hang, realizing they can lose out on one frag if they need to. And if anything, Rafa's going to be able to pop a 1v1 potentially. Now they denied away Mega, they denied away Heavy earlier on. The Hang's only netted himself one elimination, but they only need three left to go here to close out this map. That was a, a potential pummel coming through, but we knew the Hang was not going to fall. Yeah, I feel like... Oh, he's going for the quad damage peeper as well. He's, yeah, see you later, mate. Oh, no, he got rid of it. Just just at the right time. That would have been such a wonderful kill as well. Looks not good. They have two on one. They need that kill on the Rafa to Hang. From below, comes in with a big tribal kill, but now Bus Driver cannot afford to die. No one on Play to Improve can afford to die anymore. One more elimination will cause Liquid to be up 2-0 and on match point. I wonder if it, it's too big of a task. Because like even if the hang almost went down, he's doing so much damage and forcing them into a corner. Now, to survive, you can't really move around the map. If you can't move around the map, Liquid can collect everything. And here comes Pika. Yeah, and you have to worry constantly about this giant robot flying at you trying to pick you off. 100 damage is no joke. That's the thing. You, the second you see Pika, you have to put all of your attention into it. And that's the strength here. It diverts attention. It splits the workload. Because we've had such a major slowdown between these two teams because most of it's played to improve, just trying to run away, just trying to survive that last elimination. I feel like as you're running away, though, they have no choice at this stage. But as you run, you have to give up so much control, which makes the inevitable uh -oh. fight uh -oh. almost impossible. Rafa is up behind and Yeah, just... Clean execution right there. Dehang's going to be the one that's causing all the attention, and Rafa just following up with uh, two rocket launches. Very few champions in the game, bar none, can contest with BJ's damage now. Okay, so we've had two close quarter, fast paced action maps. Now catch up. We're going over to Runes of Star now. Slower paced map, a lot bigger, a lot more playmaking potential when it comes to the quad. There's a lot more rail angles you can hit to deny that away. I feel like, though, even though, it's, even though it's like the opposite type of map that we've just had, this kind of feeds into the very cerebral way that we see Liquid play, like Rafa and hang the masterminds of Quake, the, the brain not aim kind of thing. They're going to be very smart about this. I favor Liquid on a large map just as much as I would favor them on a small map. You know, you just kind of just... So we just favor them on every map. But basically, yes, because... I agree. It, it's, I, I always say this about Team Liquid is that you can see their comms without having to hear their comms. You know, mm. you know what they're saying. You know just every single little thing. Whenever you watch them stream, you know, we kind of mentioned earlier, you know, they're definitely the team that stream this game the most, especially leading up into QuakeCon. I'm pretty sure, you know, 90% of you guys and girls in chat have been watching Rafa do this, you know, the scrims they've been practicing going into this event. And the, the communication is the best in the business. You know, it's small calls here and there, you know, small little key words like yours, mine, cancer, yeah. They, they make a call and they instantly say cancel, they drop out, they listen to each other. Every single little piece of information is coordinated, nothing goes by. And that kind of coordination is vital at this level of competition. Well, you even, you even mentioned like a key word in there, like little. Like when they call something, it's not, you know, um, it's not like say, okay, I'm going to head over to quad and I'm going to try to do this. It's like quad, mega. It's very precise communication, which allows you to have your own time to think, your own time to listen to where people are going, your own time to focus on your own game. and. And that kind of communication, it's it denies like any sort of um, like rage, you know, any sort of tilting because you're not communicating in a way they can hear you getting frustrated. It's just you know clear clear calms in tournament as well. They they don't seem to have those kind of emotions. You know, actually, Rafa had mentioned that in an interview during DreamHack Tour, which was even if we might get frustrated with each other sometimes during our practice games and our you know our scrims, there's no room for that in tournament. Because if you get frustrated by half a second, Wasting you're making a wrong time. call or you're making a call late. And it just doesn't work for anyone. And here we go. Obviously, going into Runes of Sarnath is going to be a quite a drastic champion change. Visor, having that piercing sight as a coordinated team is so dangerous. Is he going to win? Oh, I was actually wondering, are we going to see the 1v1 actually go in Rafa's favor? Because he got that initial damage with the nail. But this is BJ with two LGs. Very few champions can survive that. And we never really talk about the versatility of Liquid, actually, because we've had Rafa playing BJ for a good portion of these maps. And now it's actually the Hang playing BJ, and he's playing the Visor. They, they both can play. 
pretty much every champion on the same level. Maybe Strong and Peeker would go the way of Dehang because he's obviously very well known for it. But they have this fluidity to be able to switch up things if they need to, depending on how they feel that day. And obviously on what map. Exactly. It's not a matter of I'm the Slash player on the team and right. you're the BJ player. They're both fantastic at the game. And they use the champion for the job, regardless of who that is. Bus Driver can't win that 2v1. Just a starting machine gun by itself. That's why BJ is so good in this current meta, because fresh off the spawn, if you have your ability, you can still kill basically anyone in the game. Well, they can. I can. I'm not good enough for the game to do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't tell Max Belly. Maybe this time next year. Yeah, maybe, maybe next maybe. QuakeCon. We'll see you here. I'm getting there. You know, eventually I'll get good. We can see Rafa low health. Again, tied up pretty much in frags. They stay very, very close in the beginning. But it comes down to like how well you can stay so focused and stay around the map, making those calls of Mega, making those calls of Heavy, getting at the right time, forcing the fight in your own favor. Because split up right now, play to improve R. Yeah, I mean, Awoken was a nice little bit of progress for play to improve. How they were basically able to, you know, actually maintain how close things were, didn't escape them like it happened on Corrupted Keep. But yeah, right now, actually, it's play to improve that have the lead. It's a small lead, but it's a lead nonetheless. So now we got the dual wood ready to go. So hang able to take away the mega. A heavy will be up after, which is going to be very important if you can survive, get the quad transition towards heavy. Raph is just trying to scout, trying to pick up again. These hourglasses are just so important. Quads will be picked up for bus driver. He needs to hit these shots, though. You cannot afford to miss these, especially when you have quad up. They do have a four frag lead. He's not looking extremely healthy. He's got the 100 HP. He has the extra 50 armor now up to 95, and he has Raph in his sights. Yep, just caught Rafa in the wrong place at the wrong time. The bus driver with such an impressive stack. This is an open map, and what a reactionary rail there from bus driver. Missing a couple of shots at the beginning, but doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. I like Rafa's positioning, kind of sitting near the teleporter just in case he sees them. There's no way Lifts didn't coordinate that now, so that's why bus driver's running in. Even though Quads ran out, he has a stack and he has dual wield. Can still definitely win this fight, which he does. To hang is going to be punished for that one. Picking the wrong fight there, my friend. Rafa should go down here as well. No, he doesn't. Oh, don't go back in. Get, watch out! <laughs> get out of there, son. You're not going to win that fight against two. He's got to restack up. Now, Buster with the respawn, trying to get towards LG. Actually fluffs his drop, I believe. Actually, it could have been intentional, trying to jump back up and out of this one. You can see them on your screen. The communication going on the side of play to improve. And now they're trying to force these fights. So we'll get a nice one-for-one -one trade there. But they've actually doubled the amount of, uh, of frags that Liquid have. They're at 14 to 7. I feel like this is the best lead they've had so far. You know, it's a matter of having to maintain this now. That's easier said than done against the likes of Liquid. Misses the rail, tries to swap weapons at the wrong time. So basically in that fight, even though it would have technically been a 2v1, with Lisp doing no damage whatsoever, that was just a 1v1 with an extra frag if you get one. Plus Driver missing some of these rails. You can't really put people on blast too much for missing every single rail, because obviously it's not an easy feat, especially at this level of competition. But. It's amazing how costly missing a shot can be Yeah, at this level of Quake. Especially if it's like a rail where you have such a long reload time to switch over to another weapon if you need it. You need to have the right weapon out at the right time, like that. the right job done. <laughs> like yeah. right oh, no! Watch out! Watch out for those totems, man. If you mix up... They can be up, tricky. They can be sneaky. Oh, yeah. Because if you mix up where you place those totems, it's inconsistent. It's hard to pin down. It's like, well, if I run around this corner, there might be a totem, but sometimes I'm so weak, I have to take that risk. Dahang has the stack of dreams with that protection right now. There should be some free kills, but they're going to try and play the runaway game. Goes into the totem. That's going to give Lith a little bit of knowledge of at least he's there. I know he's chasing and he's taken some damage, but he's regened it back. This is BJ with protection. What totem? thing is you're also taking a lot of time here now for him to take heavy again they, i think they're favoring the control on the map more than trying to actually make frags happen with this obviously you're going to take them when you can get them but control is what liquid's all about oh yeah it's like you know that they are so mathematical with how they approach the game excellent rocket couple of rockets back to back to hang just has these amazing shots where he just just casually flicks and just gets one of the best shots we've ever seen such a wonderful feat to have bus driver super weak to hang just needs one more tick of lg to finish the job no way at all he's missing that one and they're bringing things back only two kills separating the two teams now let's doesn't want to pick that fight he knows he lost heavy he knows he does not have the stack to compete there well, let's see. I mean, we need to have them come back now for play to improve. They were up 14-7, to 7, and now things are about to be tied between the two teams. You're just seeing how many frags eventually Liquid do get off of picking up one of these items. They're not getting it during the items, but they get them off the back of that, showing their real true strength. Your bus driver's going to be able to heal back up back to 75. But they're slowly losing this lead that they had built up for them. I really love this combination of BJ and Galena, you know, because the second BJ is almost dead, he obviously regenerates the next 25 health that he has ready in his stack. And then when you stand on a Galena totem, you get loads of health back as well. The level of sustainability with these two characters back to back is super impressive. 
And also, uh, you know, going on the other end of that spectrum with Liquid running the, the visor, this thing is, there's so many champions that really complement BJ well. And if you're Rafa here, you can feed that information over to Hang to say where they are so they can go. Also gives the information to hit these long range rails to get that early 90 damage in before they have a chance to retaliate. So now we're seeing finally Bus Driver actually get some control. Him and Play to Improvement, well, sorry, him and Lifts together able to take Mega and take Heavy. That's a really good call on the tri -bolt. He has a level of control here for the core damage. Pushed away with the dual wheel. Bus Driver saving it for the last minute. Can he win the 2v1? Here comes this behind to save the day. This should very well be a quad damage, and it will be for Play to Improve. This is their moment to start building an impressive lead. Oh no, that shot actually got him to turn around. He had someone dead to rights over in J spot. And now Dehang actually is going to be pressured on. But the thing is, he's stalling for so much time. Yeah, Liss will get the kill, but one kill for about 10 seconds of time wasted is going to be a trade Liquid are more than happy to take. Especially because I think I definitely favor them more outside of power-up. Like, play to improve. They've had the majority of the power-ups controlled. Dehang gets ambushed, but minimal kills, uh, considering they did hold power-up. They do have a lead, though. The matter is, can they maintain that level of quality? I feel like when the power-up's not a play, Liquid, they are definitely a, a stronger team in terms of coordination, right? They're a stronger team in 2v2 in general. So I feel like the goal here for Play to Improve is going to be maintain as much control over power-up as possible. That was entirely because Bus Driver just really, really calculated how to use that ability. You know, he saved it for the right moment, and that's the only reason they got it. Considering the stage of the game we're in, too, keep in mind if Liquid win this next map, they're through to the semifinals, and they're one step closer to taking this championship, where on the other end of this, Bus Driver and List, they could be knocked out and be sent home. It's not the kind of coming home that they're hoping for. We're going home. <laughs> yeah, we're... <laughs> Gonna sing it, but let's see about that. <laughs> but speaking of which, it's a very slow-paced game. You know, we're about halfway through now, and only just gonna hit that halfway point for Liquid, who now have 25 kills, trading it one for one. Oh my gosh, that amount of damage he did! Yeah, Dehang will be there to, to retaliate and get one himself, but still, that was so much LG out of lists. And up 31 to 27, maintaining this four frag now. Five frag lead is such a good sign to see out of play to improve. They keep this pace up of improving over the series. Could be going to this fourth and fifth map. They both did pop their dual wield. I think actually the dual wield was used there because they both knew that Mega was going to spawn. So I think using dual wield to win the 1v1 and then get Mega, I think they must have opted having more control to try and fight the power up if they had that. And I feel like it's going to be really useful now because even though he's landing those rails, they're both so stacked. Even if they're getting hit by rails at this point, it doesn't really matter. Yes, Rafa goes down, but Dehang has the protection. Their objective is complete. That was what they tried to achieve there. And now they just need to stay alive, which is going to be very hard to do. I think Rafa has piercing side up, giving the vision, giving the information over to Dehang so he can chase down these frags. But these rails coming out, I think that's out of list, is just holding him back. Sorry, his bus driver hit a lot of shots there. And obviously, you're going to lose out Omega off the back of this. And I think Dehang's going to net about two kills off of it. Oh, this is one of the worst places you could possibly get caught. Dehang's going to get 2v1 here, but he still has protection, so he's probably gonna actually going to win this trade. No, Lith gets him. What? What happened there? What a 1v1. A little unfortunate. Again, that comes down to just taking that split extra second for Rocket. If he maybe held on a, you know, a half second longer, he would have seen the way he was going to move and might be able to get that elimination earlier on. But only a two frag lead still for play to improve. Quad's going to be the next point of contention here. And bus driver and Liss have been pushed away towards this, or away from this mega. And again, look the way that Rapid Hanger fighting. They try to go for these rails nonstop, and then when they do get a situation where they feel like they can win, that's when they push him with the LG. Funny. Consistently taking these one for one trade situations right now, but I feel like the Hank should be able to pick this one up. Bus driver was incredibly weak, trying to sit down there for heavy, but I actually, in some cases, wonder why he was there. You know, going for such a popular point where you know a fight's gonna happen, if you don't have the stack and had just used his dual wield, I don't think there was any universe he survived that. Yeah, it's just the thing is, I think they both realize that the Hank and Rafa have gotten mega, they've gotten heavy so many times now, they're trying to contest and take away one of these items. Problem is that you're not really able to do that when you're by yourself. Now, we actually we actually do have some in-game comms for the first time today, so let's quickly check in there and see what happens when the quad appears. My fucking elf. They're gonna get heavy. They I'm told gonna, them there too. I'm cutting Probably off nail, nail pad. pad. Yes. Incoming quad. Directed. Galena can die. I'm resetting. Lost. Seven is power up. Yep. I'm at mega. Like one nail, yes, do willing nail. Good job. I'm coming to help you. Yep, I'm trying to just stay on that platform. Yep, come mega. I got it, I got mega. 45. Rail, BJ. About to have sight, two seconds. The stairs. Got him. Okay, about to use for you. Uh, nail pad to rockets. Okay. Rockets. Nail, nail, I'm coming. 
And again, you just hear the, the quick communication, the precise communications you mentioned, Ketchup, trying to make sure that the calls they make are very fast and can react, react reacted on on a dime. And you can hear that, you know, Rafa is the leader of the team. You know, Rafa is the one that has, I'm not going to say all the knowledge because they're both obviously super knowledgeable in the game, but Rafa's the one that is confident enough uh, in the game to just cut every single little detail he points out. And that's because he has such a legacy with Quake, right? He can pick up on the small things that other players will miss. And that's why when he's the one calling the shots, your team is going to have such an advantage. Oh, that was a great rock out of lists, actually. To keep things at 38 apiece. It's going to come down to the wire another time. Comes up the jump pad. It's very low, Ooh, but it takes Rafa down shot. as well. Wonderful shot there from this. Very impressive. I mean, and this is off the back of Liquid getting the quad too, where they got a couple of kills off of that, and they're still able to keep it head to head here. Lifts is just on a spree here. He's on a tear. He takes down to hang on top of this. And he sees Rafa, and he has no interest in taking that fight. He wants to get out of there. He wants to make sure he can help out Bus Driver, who right now uh, is somewhat alone. Oh, they're going in for the fight for the LG. Cannot survive that. Two LGs from BJ. High damage output, man. You have to respect it. But sometimes it's, well, how, how do you know when he's going to pop the dual wheel? Sometimes you just have to dedicate. If he pops it, that is what it is. Rafa, I think he's eventually going to fall from this. He's still so low on HP. I think Liss is actually going to die as well. But he actually gets Rafa before this happens to hang. Picks up and takes away the Mega. Heavy's up too. And I think we're going to see the transition come in. I don't know why, but Hang really wants to force this fight oh, off wow. the bat here. Kit a big lead to put the pressure on. Heavy still hasn't been picked up yet, but it looks like both teams are trying to focus on this protection. List is able to get a one for one. Three seconds to go. Can Dehang get this away? Or are we going to see Bus Driver hold on? He steals it off of them. He's going to push in, looking for him. He gets the kill into Dehang. The Heavy's still up, which he could transition if he needs to, but he wants these frags. He wants to make this protection work for him. The second Dehang actually went for that push in the LG, he almost like forced that situation to happen. He allowed Lith to respawn well. He spawned, you know, when he spawned, he had the stack and the shotgun, which is exactly why the one for one took place. It's crazy. The snow Ball effects that can happen, but Bus Driver got plenty of damage done with that protection. Lith's pretty weak though. Now he has to go in and try and help. Lith drops. Oh. Even though things are close, this could be game over. Going in for the dual wield, but pops it maybe a little bit too late. It's gonna actually be a while before he gets one of these kills. And will anyone even drop here? They do. Ooh. Lith gets a totem and a shotgun. The unofficial double kill, but a double kill nonetheless. This might have saved their day. Play to improve are doing such a great job of just sticking together, forcing these two on two or two on one fights and picking Liquid off before they can regroup and reset in these. Another Totem comes down, they're gonna push through 20 HP. Left for a bus driver, he's gonna fall, but Liss is gonna be there yet again with another shotgun. 48 47. We see the Mega being picked up by Dehang. He's gonna be bounced in the other shotgun's gonna be there. He doesn't have the rail, Can't but he wants it. to eliminate. But the damage he's doing is ridiculous. He's done so much damage, but he couldn't really deliver the final hit on Dehang. That actually could be super punishing because now Rafa could win this 1v1 versus bus driver. You have to watch out, Bus Driver with the clutch rail! He needed that one, and he needed it badly! It comes down to this one, Liz pushing in towards Heavy. The hang's gonna be able to steal that away. They're trying to push in, the rails are not landing. They gotta be careful to be flanked for the backs, and a Raph is cut out of position! And you know what? They bring home this map and take it to a fourth. That was such an impressive turnaround. Every single shot they landed at the end of that map was imperative. If they missed one of those shots, they would have lost the 1v1, and with like one or two kills left to go, that would have been a death sentence, Jason. It's so impressive they were able to take this map and potentially a 3-1 like we expected to see, or maybe this is the beginning of the end. This, if this is a reverse 3-0, this has to be one of the most impressive comebacks we have ever seen in this game. Like watching 0-4 beat suit the other day, and actually, it would be exactly the same, the same turn of yep. events. The reverse 3-0. And to be fair, if we, if we look and, and kind of analyze, and I mean, luckily we're going to have Machiavelli at the end of the series to talk about it, but Bus Driver and Liss, like, they played so well together. It's like they were holding hands around the map, and that's when they started to really shine, because Liquid weren't able to, like, regroup in time and get the weaponry they needed to force these fights in their own favor. They did such a good job there of of making sure they had each other's backs and Lyths, he really popped off as well. Yeah, in, in like the final closing moments of that map, Lyths just became an absolute animal. And that, that does seem to happen in these tournaments, you know, where when the final matches happen, sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll either step up, maybe you'll fall to pieces. You know, when, when one of those power-ups doesn't go your way, when it's super, super close, maybe you can start feeling a certain way about it. And it starts to make you playing a lot worse than you know you can. I feel like the exact opposite just happened with these guys. But I mean, the proof's in the name, right? Play to improve. The two of these guys have been playing Quake Champion since it came out last year, and they've been in every tournament they can compete in, especially the team stuff. You know, they've been competing in every team tournament they can. And I feel like the progression of these guys, it shows that why grinding and why playing, you know, there's room for everyone in this game. Yes, they both play Quake anyway, but as, especially with Bus Drive, you know, newer players to like competitive Quake, a year is a long time 
to go from not making the World Championships last year to entering this year, getting minimum top eight, and just taking a map off Team Liquid. And one thing I really want to bring up again, catch up, is, is something I, I want to keep mentioning over the course of the series is the emotions um, they have to be feeling and, and how emotional, or I keep, I keep messing up the word, how emotional play to improve are. Emotional bubble. Yeah, emotional bubble. Um, how emotional they are and how that can, again, be, you know, the angel on your shoulder or the devil on your shoulder. It's helping them out so well. You saw their list. Like, once he started to hit those shots, he was feeling it every single time. He was able to feel so aggressive and play so aggressive. And I would love to have seen, actually, the damage he did in that map alone. Going on to the fourth map, which is going to be Blood Covenant. I think this is where things get tricky because I'm going to say this is going to be a rapid to Hank's playground. For sure. I mean, we kind of thought similar things about Ruins, and, and it was always like hard to say because it was it was so close and they seemed so evenly matched on that map. You wonder if history is going to repeat it. But you know, the body language is one big thing to talk about. Bus Driver scores the first blood, which is a great start. Double heavy machine gun. Again, the damage output is insane with this champion. But smiles all round for these guys. Rafa almost dies, but again, that one rocket missed was the only reason Rafa survived. You see trying to wait for Heavy, actually waiting to be sniped out by the rail. First shot's gonna land, the second unfortunately will miss. And I got him kind of trapped, but again, look how close they are. Like, this is this is just constant 2v2s now happening. It's not like you're seeing a lot of 1v1s break out around the map. There's always that teammate to help out, always that teammate to finish off the kill or to save your life. And as you see there, a quick 2-0 here for Liquid, do nothing the 3-1 start. And Rafa, knowing his own stack, knowing that even though he was going up against a rail gun, all he needed to do, hit or miss, uh, was land his own heavy machine gun shots to kind of win that fight. And that's the thing, right? You know, it's not actually about fearing taking damage. It's about knowing the potential damage you can take and deciding, is this fight worth taking? You know, if I were to get hit by 100% of this, you know, the bullets done, do I take the fight? Wow. <laughs> Surprise! It's a sneaky BJ there out of bus driver, hiding in the corner. Does get some decent damage done, but again, Heavy and Mega just being recycled time and time again for Liquid. Talk about control, and they're doing just that yet again. We need to see somehow, though, a play to improve, break this control, and that comes down to, you know, kind of throwing all of your eggs in one basket, trying to contest Heavy, contest Mega. They tried to contest Mega there, but with Bus Driver falling immediately in that fight, there was no chance for them to take that away. Yeah, the difference in the power-ups, you know, and, and the pickups on this map, obviously different from Ruins, is that, you know, Ruins was a lot more vertically split, you know, one of the, you know, the Mega on the very top, Heavy on the very bottom. On Blood Covenant, you know, the Heavy and the Mega, they're, they're on opposite sides of the map. So if you have, it, it introduces like a, a new level of control, right? Which is why they make a big difference. The dual wield gets popped. Is it going to be enough to take the cob? That's why I wonder, Dehang has a really impressive stack. Running in there, Lith manages to just shut him down immediately. And Bus Driver has more than enough stack to be dangerous with this quad damage. But can they track them down? He's going to spot out Rafa. That'll be a clean first elimination. Again, I, for me, it's, it's this quad should be about taking Mega Control, taking Heavy Control. Not really about getting these eliminations, because that's where we saw play to improve, start to win on Runes and Starnath. Again, it wasn't off of these power-ups, it was just off of the control they gained and off the ability to stick together hand in hand. But yeah, the one good catch there on the quad damage has brought them back into the fight. This is very, very weak, so you might drop down here. It depends on what the next fight's going to be like running in with the LG. A fight the bus driver can definitely take, but Rafa with the clutch rail. Wonderful weapon switching. That was an all or nothing play. If he missed that rail, he was dead. I feel like that's just going to be a term used over the course of the tournament. But Rafa, you know, because you can't forget. The thing is, people always talk about NA being the brains and EU being the aim when it comes to playing Quake, but you can't ever underestimate Rafa to hang. If they're, if they're playing on a good day, their aim can match the likes of Claws, match the likes of Tox. It really feels to me like Liquid was always the best of both worlds, especially in Quake Champions. You know, they have, they have everything. They tick every box, and that's why right now they're the most dangerous team on the planet. Rafa with some good rockets, but it's not going to be enough. The 2v1 saving the day. Dehang now forced in a terrible position. He's going to have to try and waste some time, potentially, while Rafa runs in to try and save. Actually content taking Rafa a week, kind of trying to keep him behind. I do wonder, actually, why no one actually pushed that one down? They must have tried to get Rafa instead. You, know, you talk about control. If Tahang's super weak, it might be risky for him to try and fight for one of these pickups. Oh, this. That was some Whoa, really nice. good damage done. Tahang will be able to respawn, as you just saw. The Heavy's going to be up, and they're going to be able to secure this and turn it into potentially a protection where Mega's going to be up off the back of that. This could be a major turning point in the game for either team, or we could see Liquid lengthen this lead of 5 to potentially 10 and we could potentially see play to improve, tie things up. That was an excellent rocket from Rafa. You know, the 100 damage telling you that he's landed it, just the money shot in the right place. Oh, he's low. Even though the protection goes in their favor, there's no way they can survive. That's why Dehang was so confident running in there with the dual SMG. Can definitely get the job done. 
heavy machine gun. The tracking on this is super impressive as well. Tribolt's probably going to get this kill right here. Is he going to try and just back off? Yeah, they want heavy. That's going to be the next prize, not the kill. Was just snatched away from him, though. They have the knowledge. They definitely called the timer. There's no way they didn't say at least what the timing on the next one's going to be. Again, to hang. I mean, he got one kill. I guess that's technically the second, maybe even a third here off the protection. He's able to steal it away, more nice. importantly. That was so clean. But their lead didn't, like, grow out uh, exponentially. Like, it's been still steady. Five to eight at the moment, or five to seven now, if I can count. Um, heavy still should be secured on the side for play to improve. I think Raph is able to chase down the man who actually secured it. No! Yeah, she escapes off the back of that. So it's a really good job, actually, I'd say, for play to improve. They're, they're really not falling that much farther behind, but obviously, if you're down seven the, the rest of the match, you're not going to win. Exactly. You know, that's one thing Liquid can do is maintain a level of consistency. You know, they're really good at maintaining the lead. Very rarely does it escape them. You know, we kind of saw a notable exception there with Miser EU yesterday in Corrupt Keep, where the, the crazy comeback took place and Liquid just lost all hope uh, on that one map. But then instantly, you know, you, like a fl flick of a light switch, they recovered on the next map, and it was like the previous match never happened. It's a shame for Bus Driver there. He, he, he sat around at Mega for such a long time to only die and not actually secure it. He died like a second or two before uh, Mega was picked up for Liquid or before it respawned back in. Still only a seven difference. Now taken to eight here. Quad's gonna be up in about 20 seconds time. Mega's up right before it, so you need to see play to prove to be here to contest that. And they tried, but it didn't work out successfully for them. Incoming quad. Now here comes that quad damage. They always say, you know, kind of within the 20, 25 second mark, that's kind of when you want to be running around and trying to maybe control, maybe try and fight for it. I feel like Liquid are in a fantastic position. Gets ambushed a little bit, but just look at the difference in stack. Team Liquid have so much more health. Yes, the dual wield comes out, but Bus Driver okay, manages bus to driver. steal away the quad with a few little bits of health to spare. I wonder if he can recover. It's time to go to school, kids. This man taking away the quad. He's done this so many times. Now, him and Liz together have done such a fantastic oh. job. And of course, just like talk about it, commentator's curse. It was that basically a 2v1 from opposite sides of the map. It was the rail from Dehang and it was a finish from Rapper. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, where even if you can only see one member of Liquid, there's a good chance the other one knows exactly where you are or is shooting at you already. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. You know he's not too far away. And if you want to take damage from one source, you can better bet. There's going to be a second one coming in a few seconds. So the quad does net them. Actually, 11 frag lead. Keep in mind, they only need to win this map to get through now to the semifinals and play to improve. And they start to listen up to their name here because they're falling further and further behind. They actually had a lead for a portion of the map, and then it went from like a one frag difference to now a seven to now a ten. Yeah, it's a matter of recovery, really, isn't it? This gets one, but he's taking loads of damage, and there's no way to hang didn't say he's weak. They could be able to do the math. Don't know exactly what's going on here. Brings me pressure, I think, from both sides. Yeah, you can see the LGs coming in. It's a good little pincer move there. And then uh, where's Liss? I think actually Liss is like right under Bus Driver. Gets the elimination on Rafa. So there you go. That's what you need to start seeing out of them. Get sure. Liquid a little bit too aggressive. A little bit too cocky. Oh, dang, that's such a stack here. And he's got dual wield. Oh, missed rail. That's going to give them the data. They know exactly where they are now. So blood hungry, even shot up his teammate. Look how early they are here to to Mega and towards protection too. They just really showing they want to be the first ones here. Really easy to hold down this position. It's a major health stack out of Liss. But Liss is having such a tough time of actually transitioning across. Coming, coming, coming. He oh, fell to we pillars. Go. Portal. Good job. Coming. I'll take it possible. Yes. I got O2. He's weak. I'm gonna push her. Heavy is not up. Okay. Shotgun. Chase him to heavy. Go. Cancel. Right. Cancel. He's in charge. Killing. All right. Uh, she's in rockets, and then he's at bridge stairs. Bridge still. Danger nail. Killing at quad. He's still willing me at quad. Coming, coming. Mid weak. The other one's up a rocket. Yep. She's weak at quad. I just love how you heard Raph make the call that it's going to mid. And DeHang said he was already on his way, but he actually just waits out here on the catwalk and just hits him with the rail. Like, they, they know the way they're trying to funnel them and try to make them actually to go just for free frags. I think that's also why I love the Vita pick from Rafa, because, like, he's he really is the master of key details being mentioned in the blink of an eye, where it's entirely digestible and nothing gets missed, but he doesn't waste time. He doesn't waste the half second it takes to elaborate. But Visor is such a wonderful champion for that kind of playstyle. 
the second we saw the piercing sight, he called both locations immediately. Yeah. And they're showing what Visor can be so good on Blood Covenant. Raph is going to be pushed, but he will get the first one to Hangs to be in hot pursuit as well. Get another two for one, or sorry, two for zero that they just cannot afford to have happen if you're played to improve. This is their last chance. This is their last map to keep their hopes alive at QuakeCon and finally breaking through. You know, as you mentioned, for Bus Driver to get through into the main event and to break top eight. You don't want to fall now. We do sort of draw closer to the end of the game though, Kaplan, and I'm wondering how it feels like play to improve. They've been unable to kind of like really reach that next level uh, on this map. You know, they, where they kind of put the ball in their court to make the adjustments. And right now, the adjustments haven't really been able to be made at all. Look at they're so strong as a team. There we go. Yep, forced away. I mean, actually did Rafa a favor, knocking him out of that teleporter. There's the vision yet again. Oh my god, the Tri-Bolt. Tri-Bolt is so good. Just got to respect it, you know? You've got to respect the Tri-Bolt, man. It enforces the utmost respect. God's plan. God's plan. Dang's pushing it towards LG. He's gonna spot out lists, and these are these are frags they can't afford to lose, but it's so hard to stay away from them when you know they have vision against you. When you know even Rafa, more importantly, is staying away from Dehang, just trying to fish them out, trying to spot them so they can take this match to a close. Eight eliminations is all it's gonna take, and I'm assuming Dehang's not gonna get it with the quad. He's gonna get it in a second here as he spots out bus driver. Dead. That's a wonderful trade. That should be there's no lists. Gets an excellent rocket actually. I love the adaptation, kind of knowing he was knocked into the air, and he had to kind of go for that like, like bottom left flick, and he was able to still do it. Rafa, I'm not sure he's 100% on how much uh, health they had left. Obviously, he didn't stick to the weaker target, but there's no way he was going to know what their stack was at that point. But as long as, as, long as like, Rafa hang with the lead they have of 13 frags, like, as long as they just stick together, there's technically, there should be no way Play to Improve come back in this match. Oh, yeah, that's so out. good. That was so good. I feel like you can only really celebrate an excellent shot for like so long on this map because half a second later they die. But still, the appreciation is definitely there. Oh yeah, I, I think rocket, uh, mid-air rockets or middies are one of the most satisfying things to ever ha happen. Uh, I was really hoping for it to <laughs> be right there I was right about to say, you were saying, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> Gracious gods, liquid. Oh, Rafa. That was an impressive 1v1. Super, super weak, but staying true to his scope. And obviously, you know, a little bit of extra damage on the heavy machine gun when it's in its scope mode. And going back in towards heavy already being taken, probably transitioning over towards Mega up in about seven seconds of time. You know, bus driver and list, they've been able to claw their way back, you know, here or there. Only down 12 now. Problem is, they're, only, they're down 12 when Liquid just need four. This is going to be an insane... If they manage to pull off this comeback, it's going to be ridiculous. But I feel like Liquid are playing so well, it feels impossible. It feels like too big of a task at this point. Well, let's see, it's going to come down to this protection. Our play to improve in a contestant. They almost have to at this rate. Bus driver gets the first. De Hang is going to need to start hitting these rails. He's got two people to find. Protection is going to spawn in in three. And you can almost hear, I, I can like literally hear Rafa saying in my head, all right, back away, like give it up, like let them have it because there's no way they were actually going to be able to successfully take that back by himself. Yeah, because if they just focus Liths here, if there's any way they can find him, he's still going to be just as vulnerable. They used, the, they actually used the protection as an opportunity for De Hang to get the heavy. And that was a win for them. They traded power up for heavy, and when they only have three kills left to go, that heavy that De Hang now has is probably Really going to be the catalyst to winning this entire series. 11 frags to catch back up. That's a duel coming in, just juggling in. Look at the damage, the two's coming up. But even though Dehang dropped, he, he did so much damage yeah. to the bus driver. Like, so much. Hang on, 12 minutes and 40 seconds. 10 frag lead for Liquid, two to pretty much turn this into a semi-final berth. Bus driver's already low on HP. This actually could be the final two catch up. That's going to be a one. No, oh, wait, no, the totem keeps him alive a little bit, but they're both so weak. I don't see how they can recover from this. They're now going to chase him down. And there's, he absolutely called how weak he is. Gets the long range SMG alive now, but I feel like it's borrowed time at this point. Here comes Bus Driver trying to save the day, but not a single one of them can drop at this stage. And you're already on low HP. It's going to be even more difficult to survive. Dehang's going to come in. He, I mean, he can't see how much health they have, but the Mega's going to be getting over to the person with the low HP. I think that was Lifts. To be fair, they've been stalling for a lot of time, but they still haven't been calling away at this kill difference that's currently in favor of Liquid. Yep. And there it is, 100 damage rocket to finish it off with. And Team Liquid will be one of the first teams through to the semifinals. Now, this was the expected result to see Liquid moving on in the bracket. They are the strongest team for a reason, but I gotta say, man, we have to give it up for play to improve. They came at this tournament, and this was their breakout performance as a two. Now, they've had in an inconsistent last year, but this year at QuakeCon 2018, they can definitely lead this tournament with their heads held high. Good yeah. stuff from those guys. It was impressive. It was impressive. And I mean, at the same rate, play to improve, like they did do a good job. They were able to take a map against them. They had it very close for a long portion of time on quite a few maps. But I think Liquid just really showed why they're the best team in the world. 100%. We're rejoined by you, Machiavelli. Had plenty of chance to watch behind the scenes. What do you reckon? 
Well, luckily for us, we don't have to hear your voice because you've been muted. So, uh, but you said it was as you, he, he said it was as he <laughs> expected for those at home that may not have caught it. We did. You did say three one. To be fair. Still can't hear you. Great. I love production. They're doing such a good job of keeping you out of my ear. Uh, before we do hear from you, McAvoy, I swear we'll give you a chance to talk. We're going to head to Jahar on the stage for an interview with Liquid. All right, I'm right here with Shane Rafa. How you doing, dude? I mean, feeling pretty good. We made it to the semis, so it's one step closer to the finals. Um, yeah, and I'm glad that they played as well as they did. Uh, it'll give us you know, some things to look over going into our next match to get us prepared uh, for the finals later, hopefully. Yeah, of course, it went to four maps, and uh, Ruins was incredibly close. It came really down to the wire. Do you have any kind of takeaways from that match? Uh, yeah, I, I really like the way they tried to control the LG side of the map. They made it very difficult for us to constantly have control of good guns. Um, and they played very well together. So I think it's just something that uh, Dehang and I are going to have to fix when it comes to Sarnath itself. But just some minor adjustments, and we'll be fine. And of course, it's been a real joy being able to watch you, you two practice, you two scrim, you two stream. Um, I think it's been like a, a model for comms to you know, everybody watching. It's kind of like you know, marriage counseling for all the other teams. <laughs> Do you have any like, major talking points that have come up during the course of this competition between you two? Sorry, I couldn't hear the last part. Uh, between you and Tim, do you have like any major things that you've been kind of like realizing during the course of this competition and kind of grinding on? Um, I think just making sure, same thing, like don't get distracted while fighting. Like just keep talking, always, you know, keep giving good communication, like just simple, concise stuff so that we're on the same page. And I think even with us sometimes, it's something that every team struggles with is like, are you all inning for certain items? or not, so because if one guy thinks you are and he goes and he just dies, then they'll likely go from Mega to the Heavy and have another 2v1. So it's just all about being on the same page, and yeah, the more that we'll play today, hopefully the stronger we'll get. And of course tomorrow you have the potential to maybe have to put all that aside and fight against each other in the 1v1. I think if that worked out, it wouldn't be till the finals, So that, but that would be pretty, something pretty special. So I'm really looking forward to it. Indeed it would. So congratulations, Rafa, and, and congratulations to, uh, to the hang back there, already packing up, getting ready for the next one. We're going to be going into the next quarterfinal just a bit, but I'm going to throw it back to the caster desk. How are you guys doing?